Alright, what's up guys? Another tutorial in Procreate showing something that I actually was uh, learning from watching a few YouTube tutorials, but I love this kind of a project because it's really simple. I feel like it's pretty quick, but we're going to learn a number of cool basic functions along our way there. So I'm going to get started without further ado. Once again, rubber tip stylus. Um, you could do this with a finger if you want to be a finger painter on Procreate, by all means. I will not be using pen pressure or pressure sensitivity, anything that you would use with like an Apple Pencil or one of those fancy styluses. So let's make a new document. <clears throat> I'm working at the square size today, this 2048 by 2048 pixels. And then I'm going to go ahead and get started by just drawing a quick um, circle. Before I get into that, we have our uh, different color... Uh, systems here are different color schemes that you can create and figure out yourself. Um, you can create your own color palettes if you click on different palettes. Um, this first one that comes with Procreate is called Ascend and it's set to be the default. You could pick some, you could find some. I'm going to use the Ascend palette because using a limited color system is a pretty good way to start. So um, with brushes, I'm going to go to the inking brushes. No, 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 wait, wait, my calligraphy brushes, sorry. I love this mono line brush, just like it sounds, mono line, one line, it's a really simple, elegant line. Now with any brush that we use in Procreate, you're able to tap on the brush and get a whole new um, menu of brush settings. You're able to get a whole new menu of brush settings. The one that I want to change is this one that says Streamline. Streamline is how much the um, app is going to correct the line, so instead of making like a jagged line, it'll streamline or simplify the line. I put that up to max. If I hit done and grab, let's say, like my dark blue over here, um, you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna draw a perfect circle. Watch how I do this. I'm gonna draw a pretty quick loose circle, and I'm gonna press and hold, and it creates an ellipse. But now if I press and hold with my another finger, it creates a perfect circle. I'm gonna undo that just so I can show you once more. Here, I'm gonna tilt my camera down, right? So I draw a really quickly loose circle, I don't let go with the stylus. I hold it until it says ellipse created, and then I press down with a second finger, and now it makes it a perfect circle. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and close that up a little bit. Hey, it's okay if it's a little off. Tell you what, tell you what, tell you what, tell you what. Once more, team, once more. Let's make a perfect circle. Let's connect it. Hold, hold, and boom, now we have a perfect circle. Um, you can do that by creating the circle selection tool with the ellipse tool like I had done before in my earlier tutorial. But now I want to fill this. Now the easy way to fill is if I just click and drag my color dot over here, click and drag, oh, nope, I missed. I'm going to click and drag and drop. It fills in my shape with any other color. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And still with my streamline at max and my monoline brush, I'm gonna, let's go ahead and scale this up real quick. Let's scale this layer up. And then on my second layer, let's create those drips that I uh, showed in the example. To do that, I'm just gonna quickly like drag and draw. It's okay if it's not perfect. And there I go, I got some drips. Um, if I turn off this layer real quick, and then I use my monoline brush to connect these, I can once, then, once again drag and drop and fill. Now I'm going to reveal that layer, and I could do some trimming if I wanted to here. Let's tap this layer and merge down. What that does is that combines my two layers, and now what I can do is I can go with my eraser tool. It's cool about the eraser tool is that if you tap it again, you're able to set different brushes to be your erasers. I'm gonna go through with my mono line and get rid of these like flat edges here. So I'm gonna like erase and then just go through and clear those out. I'll time lapse this part so you don't need to watch me go through all this boring process. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna grab my mono line brush again and I'll smooth out like this part where the circle meets the drip and kind of just add in there so I'm like drawing in from the side and there I go zoom out I've got a nice drip system happening now I'm gonna start doing what is called a clipping mask and what a clipping mask is if you're familiar with um 
you're familiar with clipping masks from like Photoshop or any other software, is it's going to clip a new layer to only be revealed on the layer beneath it. So check this out. If I make a new layer, I tap on it and uh, select clipping mask. You see that little arrow that says it's clipped to that bottom layer. Let's go ahead and grab from my airbrushes a much bigger soft brush and I'll change my color to be like a purple. Make it pretty big. And we see that because I'm clipping mask, I have that clipping mask turned on, right? It only brushes in that layer. So I'm going to go ahead and add like this like little bit of a sky reflection. I think I'll put like a little bit of blue in the middle there. And then if I want to, I can go through and, and smudge that up a little bit. Grab my smudge tool. I'm using like a watercolor smudge just to get some texture in it. Make my brush pretty big. And because I have that uh, clipping mask turned on, I might grab my blue brush a little bit more there and just add a little bit of blue to smudge around. There I go. I love that kind of like effect. Now, if I want to smudge or blur this even more, I'm still on my clipping mask, like my this new kind of gradient layer, right? If I press this magic wand up here in the top right by the selection tools, I have a whole set of effects that are really similar to our effects in Photoshop or any other app. Um, I'm going to use the Gaussian blur. The Gaussian blur, if I blur my layer, I can then click and drag anywhere on the screen and adjust how much it blurs. So there's a crazy blur. Let's say that I want it to blur 10, 20%. Too much is just like, well, I can't even see the thing anymore, right? And there we go. So now I've got this like faded effect. Uh, once I'm done, I'm gonna tap once more and hit apply, boom. So let's go ahead and draw our mountains in here. What's really cool is if I make a new layer, I'm gonna grab my, uh, I'm gonna grab like a, let's say a dark color for the foreground and a lighter color for the background layer of mountains. I'm gonna grab a dark purple, select my mono line brush again, and I'm gonna change that mono line brush. I'm gonna drop the streamline again. Still give it some curving to it, but not nearly as much as I need. And I'm gonna quickly draw on the outside, right around where the horizon line would be, this like quick, just like mountain system, right? Hey, like, I don't need to be a professional artist to be able to draw this. Then if I click, whoop, undo that, go back to my other color. I accidentally clicked and held and became the eyedropper. But if I click and drag a line, and then I hold that down, it creates a, a perfect straight line. If I press and hold with my uh, other th finger, now I've got a shape that I can close up really quickly. I drop my stylus, close up really quickly, drag and drop. Nope, not the previous color. I want to drag and drop my color. I think that's the one bad thing about the rubber tip stylus is it's so like uh, finicky. I'm going to drag and drop that color. I filled that in. And now with that layer, if I click it and clipping mask it, hey, it is only seen on uh on the main layer and I, if i wanted to i could go ahead and like stretch it out a little bit to change it up a little bit let's go ahead and do that again let's make another layer <clears throat> this time i'm gonna put that layer beneath my foreground mountains let's use a bit of a lighter color for the background mountains and just have them come up over and there i go that's really all i need so let's go ahead and close that shape to the best of my ability I want to make sure it's closed. I can hide that foreground layer, drag and drop my color. It's already clipping mask because I created or I, I dragged it underneath the clipping mask. So now if I reveal my foreground, I've got my mountain system starting. So let's do like some stars. Let's do some, uh, let's do the moon too. Uh, Procreate has all these like really, really, really cool um, luminescent brushes and different texture brushes. If I find under luminance, the one that I'm gonna use is called Glimmer. And I have some settings changed here, right? I'm gonna click on Glimmer. And what I have is I have the spacing turned up to the max, the jitter turned to the max, and then the other two at 0% there, spacing to the max, there it is. I'm gonna grab a very white brush, so I'm gonna make that much more pale. And then on a new layer, on a new layer, Let's put that below my mountains in case I want to um, 
have the uh, stars behind the mountains. On a new layer, I'm going to change the size of my brush up a little bit, and I can paint in with some stars. And once again, because my layer is clipping masked, my layer is clipping masked, right? It is only going to paint in that circle as with anything. So for the moon, let's go ahead and do the moon. Um, the moon, as we should know, is a perfect circle. Let's go ahead and drag it to the top, uh, above the stars, above the mountains, all that, right? Actually, behind the mountains, in case it needs to be behind, but above the stars. Um, I'm going to keep that color. I'm going to grab my monoline brush again. Calligraphy, monoline. Um, and then I'm going to zoom in to do this job because I'm going to draw another perfect circle. So press and hold so it's an ellipse. And then press and hold with the second finger while I'm holding. Boom. Let's go ahead and fill that in. I got a moon. Real easy, right? Real easy. Um, to create this sort of glowing effect, it's actually a pretty cool way to do this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I tap it and I press, where is it? Oh, you know what? I slide it to the left and there's duplicate. So now I've got two moon layers. If I press my bottom one and I go and Gaussian blur that, slide, there it is. I'm blurring too much as this is, you know, where I'm not going to see it. But if I blur it just enough, for me, it's right around that like 30% mark, maybe a little bit lower. Now it looks like my moon is glowing. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? Click, apply, and we're getting real close here. Uh, let's do some texture on the moon. I'm going to go ahead and press this and alpha lock my layer. What that does is that means I can no longer paint on anything that isn't on, that isn't already painted. I'm going to change my texture a little bit there. I'm sorry, change my color a little bit. I'm about to grab a texture brush. Um, for me, if you go to textures here, I'm going to use, I, I like this Cura Long one, but you could probably get away with any of these. If I increase the size a lot, and I just do a little bit, that might be even be too big. Here, let's increase the size a little bit less. And there's a little bit of shading. I can, uh, yeah, that actually looks pretty decent. Cool, so let's do the reflection really quickly. Hopefully I'm not going too long. I guess it's a longer tutorial. <laughs> um, for the reflection, what I want to do is I want to duplicate any layer that I'm going to reflect. So I'm going to duplicate the mountains. I'm going to duplicate, oh, I'm going to duplicate the other mountains. I'm going to duplicate the moon. I'm going to duplicate the moon's glow. And I'm going to duplicate the stars. <clears throat> So then I'm going to select each one, and to select each duplicate layer, I'm going to swipe to the right, swipe to the right, swipe to the right, swipe to the right, and swipe to the right. Now I can click and drag each of these layers. Let's move them up to the very tip top of the, my layer stack. And then if I pinch them together, I'm going to pinch them like this. Now they're all merged. So here's what I can do. I have this duplicate merge. If I press my uh, arrow here, I can flip vertical, and now I can drag them down until it's just touching right around there, right around there. Press my arrow again, and that looks pretty good. Honestly, all I really need to do after this is go to my layers, click the N here, drop the opacity, let's say down to like 45% or so there. Boom. And that's really it. You know, After that, I can just change the background color maybe really quickly. Um, one of these colors will probably be pretty nice for it, something like that, maybe a little pale. There it is. There it is. There's a really cool, simple night scene. I didn't even know a ton of painting tricks or techniques to do that. I kept a, uh, a consistent color scheme. I just used a few different uh, tools and tricks to make sure all of my drawing was consolidated, and there it is. So, Basics of Procreate Part 2. I don't know, this is the second video I made of Procreate. <laughs> Thank you for watching.